Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to check out a solo run of the Enhallowed Grave Dungeon which is part of the Hero Storm DLC. I'm Alcas from AlcasHQ.com. please make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. If you want to know the build that I'm running, link in the description, it's on AlcasHQ.com, like most of my builds. If you want to see the boss fights only, there is timestamps in the description. I will talk about all the bosses that we fight here and I will also give you my opinion about the dungeon. Anyway, let's get started. Overall, I really like the dungeon. It has cool boss fights, unique mechanics and also there's like a grappling hook thing that you have to use throughout the dungeon, which is pretty cool. On top of that, there is another cool thing in this dungeon. It's basically a locked door. It's close to the last boss and it, it's optional, so you don't have to do it. But the game basically wants you to kind of set up your own investigation and figure out how to open it. And it doesn't really give you a lot of clues, so you kind of have to search for it. If you're too lazy to do it yourself, you can check it out on my website. I already did my own investigation and after a while I could figure it out. So the link is in the description below too, but I would recommend try it yourself. It's very nice. Hopefully they will actually do this in like the new dungeons as well, because it was a pretty cool feature in my opinion. A few quick notes about the build I'm using. Like I said before, it's on the website. It's called Solo Sorg. It's in the Solo Builds category. These builds are optimized for solo play in either Overland or also Dungeon Normal, Weather Mode, whatever floats your boat. Here I'm running the Tier 1 setup, which is False God, Mother Sorrow with a Maelstrom back bar and Ice Heart. You don't need to have these very strong sets, like I have like three different gear setups and depending on what set you're using, you might have to adjust buff food or not. I would highly recommend trying to get the false god, you don't need the perfect version, the imperfect version is very easy to get and you only lose 1k magicka, which is basically nothing at all. As you can see, I'm using tristat buff food, that's why we have so much stamina, the reason why is simple because you need to dodge roll and block more as a solo player because you don't have a tank with you. So that's pretty nice. I am running the monster set Ice Heart. It's one of the most powerful monster sets right now. Yes, it doesn't do that much damage, but it gives you so much protection because almost all the time when you deal damage, the shield will activate and protect you. So often... When you forget to heal yourself or you forget to dodge roll an attack or block it, the Ice Heart Shield, which is fairly big in size, will actually save you. Like, it's so good. What I'm trying to say is, if you have problems dying or you die too much, slap on Ice Heart and trust me, it will be way better. I usually run it on Magicka specs, but you also could run it on Stamina specs, because again, it's so powerful. Sure, you don't benefit from the One Piece bonus as a stamina player, but it doesn't really matter because the, you want the shield to protect yourself. You lost? No. I wager you're just where you want to be. <laughs> well, come on then. The first boss is called Hecrim the Howler, you'll see later why. Make sure to kill the adds and dodge roll this heavy attack, this does a lot of damage and stuns you on top of that, so you could block it, but preferably dodge roll it. He's also going to summon these crystals, very easy to avoid, just move outside of it. The totem has to be prioritized because it will shoot magic balls at you and do a lot of damage. Now here you've seen I didn't dodge roll his heavy attack and I got a lot of damage and stunned on top of that. After a while he's going to unleash his flesh abomination. Make sure to kill it as fast as possible but keep an eye on the boss because of his heavy attacks. If you keep up your AOE damage it shouldn't really be a problem. It dies fairly fast. Don't stand in this huge AOE puts debuffs on you. There's not much more to it for now, so it's the same thing, he will keep doing his heavy attack, might summon a totem, 
And then after a while he will go summon this or like unleash the second flash abomination. See the heavy attacks? It's very easy to avoid. It's so well telegraphed and it takes him so long to charge. Now same thing here. Kill the flash abomination because you might think well I just nuke the boss and then we are done. But that's not true because once the boss reaches zero he will actually have a surprise for you. Whether you like it or not. So flash abomination is dead. Just focus the boss. The ice heart monster set is doing work. Like even though the boss is damaging me, I barely lose health because I always have shield. And obviously I also have hardened ward on the Sork here. Another totem. So once he drops to zero or almost zero, he will transform into a werewolf behemoth. Now, kill the totem, dodge all the balls if you have to. There's a lot of damage. He's basically going into a frenzy mode where he runs from place to place a little bit like this. Very easy to avoid. Afterwards, he will come to you. Try to, again, it's basically the same thing as the stun. Easy to dodge roll once you figured it out. Kill all the trash packs that are showing up. Once that's done, focus on the boss till he's dead. And you can see how much eyes are procs. It's, it's so amazing. Now one important thing is elemental drain. Always keep it on the boss. It will give you so much sustain and extra damage. I have it on the back bar on this build. And the first boss is down. Well done, Wayfarer. Look there on the door. The Pyre Watch sigil. These Draugrkin must have used Tuwaka's gaze to unlock it. How far down does this ruin go, Shalaria? Surely they found enough bones up here to fill those urns they brought. I do not know. No Pyre Watch <laughs> Sentinel has ventured this far into the tomb since our ancestors sealed it. Come. Our answers lie ahead. Help us. The door is sealed. And without Tuwaka's gaze. Wait, Shalaria. Look there on the floor. More sigils. Perhaps they correspond to the one on the door. You. You may be right, vampire. Look around. We must keep up the pursuit.
Another sealed door, but no statues or sigils. Any ideas, blood drinker? A few. The corresponding sigils may be in another room. We should have a look around. Perhaps in that vault to the north. are we supposed to get it to strike those sigils? We wouldn't be in this situation if you weren't lagging behind when the darkness sealed itself. The second boss is called Keeper of the Kiln. This is a very nice boss fight. I like it a lot. So there is a middle, left and right side that you can grapple hook yourself up to. You'll see in a second the boss he doesn't do a lot of damage, but now he does flames are rising in the vents, it's called. So you gotta figure the place. There is like three. Now I was lucky, I got it the first try, it's number four. So you gotta place the boss here on the sign with the four buttons. Now once he steps the sign, the fire will go away. If you fail to do so, the fire will keep rising and eventually kill you. There is a lot of ads that are coming throughout the fight. There's also archers on top. You can choose to kill them. The archers on top. I would highly recommend just pushing as much AoE damage as possible. Same thing again. We're going to figure out. Okay, it wasn't here. Maybe the next one. Also not here. Pretty cool. So here again. Again, number four. So I'm going to put the boss on number four. Careful of the heavy attack. You can dodge roll it. And even if you block it, it does so much damage, so make sure to dodge roll it. I would recommend saving your shooting star or your ultimate, whatever you use, for when the trash packs show up. Because they keep coming, they keep coming, they keep coming. Always keep your AoE damage active and then they pretty much will die at some point. I do a lot of heavy attacks here with the shock stuff, so I just get a little bit more splash damage. Same thing, does the mechanic again and I have to figure out where the sign is. Now it's number one, so we're going to number one. The boss itself doesn't do a lot of damage except his heavy attack. So you gotta be careful about the heavy attack and once if all the trash packs are dead it's not really an issue. Now at this point we can just burn down the boss and then be done with it. And he's dead. I sometimes avoided the archers but if there's too many it can be very dangerous so you could kill them. Ceramic panic. It's basically because it's an achievement that you can get if you're not Defeat the Keeper of the Keeper without ever revealing the correct symbol. So like you could activate the symbol on top so the tank downstairs knows what sigil to take. But because I'm alone here I couldn't really do that. So that's why I got the achievement. Anyway. Where is Tuwaka's gaze? Where is your leader? Kiana Tombskald took your magic lantern with him. <laughs> Farther into the cave. You'll never catch him, Reinhard. Not before he... Before he what? What are you godless dogs doing here? Speak! <laughs> you have no idea what's coming. When the one who sent us comes to power, he'll beg for death. <laughs> beg! <laughs> Enough of this. Shalaria, what did you do? You heard what he said. <clears throat> Their leader and Tuwaka's gaze are ahead. Shed a tear for this monster if you wish, but make it quick.
Boss number three, Eternal Ages. This one is pretty cool. It's also like there's also a set that's basically looking like the boss. So this here has like his heavy attack again. It almost killed me. Dodge roll it. Very easy to dodge roll. Once you know how. Keep your AoE damage on the ground because he will keep spawning mobs. Now if you're outside in the circle here, then you can't actually damage him anymore. That's why I recommend there is like a safe zone in the middle. You will not get damage. You will see that in a second. Dodge roll or block the heavy attack. But I would recommend dodge roll it. So you see now I'm in the middle here and it doesn't do any damage to me and you can keep damaging the boss. Yes, the smaller adds do the same thing, but they don't do a lot of damage in this mode. And they usually die fairly fast if you have enough AoE damage on the ground, which you should have anyway. And even though he's, I basically missed most of his heavy attacks and it never really killed me, but I dropped low on health, so okay. I kinda need to learn to play, I guess. Looks impressive, I'm just lucky that I had enough health to end shields, so I didn't really die here. I had no idea such grand ruins stood in the heart of this place. Yokudun, yes? The works of your ancestors from beyond the sea. Yes. Thank Mara, they all rest in glory on the far shores. If they could see what their home has become, the shame would be unbearable. Troublemakers reach the center of the tomb. Next boss on the guard, the mad. So this one is pretty cool. Again, the grapple hooks. Make sure to start damaging him. The boss itself doesn't really do a lot of damage, but you gotta follow the mechanics. So now you can't go to the outside, so you need to stay in the middle. The boss will also summon mobs. Make sure to AoE them down. You can keep focusing the main boss. Now here, when he does this, you gotta go out. The middle zone will be completely like, it will be a death zone. You gotta grapple you yourself out in a circle, left or right, whatever, and kill these skeletal arcanists. Once all of these skeletal arcanists are dead, you can go back to the middle. That's basically the trick here. There is another very crucial mechanic. I will show you that in a second. So kill all of them. Once they're dead, you will shoot the poison back out, so you gotta go in fast. Now the same thing, damage the boss. You see, because I, I have eyes hard up and my shield, it, it barely does damage to my health. It hits like a wet noodle, basically. 
my scam hits harder. Keep damaging him and now this phase when he does this mechanic, you gotta hide behind the pillar. If not, it's a one shot. This phase will keep happening as long as the ghosts are up. So make sure to kill all the ghosts. Be careful and keep standing behind the pillars. Because if this explosion happens and you're not behind the pillar, you're dead. It's not very tricky, the boss doesn't really do a lot of damage to you or whatsoever. Just gotta be careful of the explosion. It looks pretty amazing, I must say. They did a really good job in this dungeon with the bosses. I like it. And also the arena is pretty sexy. Same thing again, we go out, grapple our ways to the skeletal arcanists. I would recommend like find like you could jump and then try to grapple but if the mob is in the way a little bit you could actually die so make sure to be able to use the grapple hook before you actually jump off the platform. That's what got me killed a few times. There is one more. And surprisingly enough the grapple hooks work very reliably. More ghosts again, kill them with AOE damage and just focus the boss. If you get stunned or feared, make sure to break free, but we have so much stamina, you shouldn't really run out of stamina here. Another shooting star in his face, now you could do the ghost face again or just burn him. So I just burned him, so I save my shooting star and then goodbye. Down here you will find the secret room which you basically have to work towards if you want achievement. It's called Knock Knock and there is like a secret waiting in there. Like I mentioned before, I do have the guide on the website already. It's in the Unhallowed Grave Dungeon Guide at the bottom. I put it over spoilers because I would recommend trying to figure out this achievement on your own or with your teammates. Because it's a lot of fun. But once you have done it, the replayability isn't really high, in my opinion, so yeah. Don't get your fun spoiled. Holding up my spine. Something profoundly evil lurks here. Whatever it is, whatever these beasts have conjured here, it will face a lasting death at our hands.
Kjolnar. I'll kill you for what you've done. By all means, try. Our patron demanded the remains of the Grey Host. What's the harm in adding a few more corpses? Chalaria, Archer Vare, sleep now. She's in no condition to fight. Go, kill that fiend. Now we're already on the last boss, Kjalnar, Tom Skull. It's not really a uh, very difficult boss here in this mode. Again, he has the heavy attack from the first boss. Make sure to dodge roll it or block it. If you don't, it will do a lot of damage and stun you. He does this AOE cleave, but because we had the shield up, it did like zero damage. This two, very easy, avoidable. AOE damage So the boss itself He doesn't have a lot of health as you can see here just two and a half million Keep damaging him Easy peasy lemon squeezy If you're too slow, I don't I think I had Pretty decent damage here. Oh, okay. Look, so he does this Mechanic where he summons skeletons. make sure to kill them Because if these skeletons reach one of the summoning platforms they will like empower him or something like that, but they don't have 20k health. It's basically one light attack or a crystal frag and they're dead. So kill them, go back to the boss. And you see how juicy Iceheart is? Like, <laughs> so much shields. I barely lose health. At some point he's gonna summon Big Papa. That's a big boy. Looks kind of hilarious and dangerous on top of that. He's not really dangerous. Basically, all he does is spit a fireball in your face. If you keep moving around, you will not get hit by it. And he also has a frost breath that he does from time to time. But if you just use your shield, you're not really gonna get a lot of damage. So now he does the frost breath, breath just shield, and no problem. And that's basically the whole boss fight. Now we just want to keep hitting the main boss. And you, again, depending on how much DPS you have, you might have to do like the, the add phase a few times or if you have enough DPS you can just burn Buster down and you will actually never see that add phase. And Ripperoni. Okay, close. He got me there. Ripperoni Pepperoni. And he's dead. The big boy will disappear. So that's basically the whole dungeon when you try it on like solo mode. A fight you, would have lost. I don't expect gratitude, but you could go swim in the oil pit if you want, but you're going to die. Now you could choose to do the secret door after you finish the dungeon. There's like two options. You can do it now or like while you progress through the dungeon. But anyway, that's more or less it. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. Hit the juicy like button. There's a few other videos that you could watch. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Cheers. You were right, of course. Even at my best, I could not hope to match a foe like that. Let alone the creature he summoned or the patron who sent him here. Whoever that is. The Pyre Watch will always be in your debt, Wayfarer. To walk and bless you. Well, that was, you know, horrifying. We never could have bested him.